one of my most hopeful finds at Spiel 2023, Within Walls, a game that is got a Lovecraft theme, which I love, Paranoia within it, which I love, Hidden Traitors, which I love, Player Elimination, which I don't love, um, but everything else sounded amazing. So I was very lucky to be given a copy of this game at the show. Is this game going to be worth the amount of money that you have to spend to get your hands on it? I'm about to tell you with my review, so play we all. This is a first play review. This is the kind of reviews I do because I think that the first impression that a game gives you when, the, when you play for the first time is what may entice you to keep playing it or not. What is Within Walls like? Okay, from the production point of view, Within Walls is okay. This is a game for two to six players, although being a hidden role, role kind of... Um, game where you have to guess who is the traitor who's the cultist two players mm, i don't see it three players meh, too quick the more players the better so uh, i played it uh, we were four of us when we played it and it played okay it was fine it was fine play wise uh production is so so okay that's that's the truth um i know what damir the designer wanted to do with this and choosing locally sourced factories and everything else, so everything is local to Croatia. I get it. I get it. But there were some decisions that I truly did not understand. Uh, although this is the rule book, this is the old rule book that you're seeing here, so this is not the one that you're meant to follow, there's another one inside. This is the board, and the board already begins with a few weird decisions like for instance you get these lids in here where you're meant to put some cards however and this is a massive big however uh, when you put the cards which i am going to show you in just a second so say that you have i don't know this is just a few because they're all the same okay so if you take three or four or five cards you're meant to put them, you know, one, two, three, four, five cards. Act one, and you're meant to put them here. But they lean like that, which is a bit, I don't know, feels uncomfortable to me. We didn't like it. We didn't like it at all. So we ended up putting them here. And that would be the end of it. Because it didn't make any sense. The way the game plays, um, that was a very hard thing. This is the rule book, okay, that you're meant to follow, the 2023 edition. Although it looks clear from the outside, you start to look and, you know, you get playing the game on one side and an example on the other. The story on one side and the example on the other. Finding a trait on elimination on one side and the example on each other. So could somebody please explain to me why we were so confused throughout? Seriously confused. To the point, and I'm not joking, to the point of when we finished playing the game, I went to look at the designers how to play video to find out what we were doing incorrectly because we were playing all the time with the conviction that we were playing wrong and we weren't. We were playing it right. We were playing exactly as it's meant to be played. So I don't know if, because this game has a theme of paranoia, I don't know if that paranoia of not knowing if you're playing the game correctly is part of the game itself. If it is, boom, that was masterpiece. But if it isn't, this needs redoing badly, badly. Seriously, 
too many, uh, too many steps, they could be condensed a lot more clearly, a lot more easily. This game is simple enough, it shouldn't need this much explanation. The way the game plays is interesting enough. How? Well, let me show you. You're going to have two different types of board. Each player is going to have the sanity board, and this is going to be the main board inside. So you're going to have one of these each. We have events, loads of event cards, and story cards. The story cards have five chapters. The aim of the game is to find out who is the cultist among your friends, the people you're playing with, before the end of the fifth chapter. After the third chapter, you can start to call for traitors. There are going to be agenda cards as well, and the agenda cards, which are smaller different cards, which should be somewhere here, in this tiny little box, and history cards. But the agenda cards come in two different colors, white and red. Each player is going to have a number of these cards. The agents, the good ones, are going to have two white ones and one red card. The cultist, however, is going to have two red cards and one white one. So why does it matter? When you call out for a um, um, one of the uh, traitors do not you are the traitor what that play is meant to do so let's say we have three cards is shuffle them you will take one card look at it not tell anyone what it is give it back and then reshuffle so the person who is showing you the cards will not know if they have shown a traitor or an agent agenda card. So even you are unaware whether the person is actually understanding and knowing if you are a traitor or not. That, that little tweak I liked a ton, seriously. We are also going to have some drug cards and some alcohol cards. Okay, history, let me try and find them. Um, these are important, okay? These are very, very important uh, because of the sanity rules, which I am going to explain in just a minute. Every round, the players are going to have to play some cards. And some of the cards are going to have some effects that you can play or, or some that you don't play at the time. So for instance, you can say, I'm going to play this, which it gives me one key. This is because the history cards are going to give you challenges. So for instance, find four keys or find three drops of blood. By using this massive cube and putting it here, the face up, means that's the advantage that the player is going to be able to have. So if, for instance, you say this, you already have one drop of blood. You need one drop of blood less to, to do the challenge. If you were to use that, the key, then you would need one fewer key to do the challenge, so on and so forth. Every round, this is going to come up. The story continues, the story continues, the story continues. By the time it reaches the fourth hole, you're meant to have resolved the challenge. This is something I didn't like, and is that there wasn't a clear consequence of not meeting the challenge other than that you're going to get insanity cards, which you are going to anyway. So what happens if you don't, that you get, you know, mental issues quicker? It didn't feel like there was enough. It felt like there is some sort of disconnect between the story deck and what we are meant to do. Uh, there's no real connection. 
each player is going to have a profession. Although they don't call it character, but essentially that's what it is. Just because it doesn't have, you know, uh, mental stats, it's just that it's going to give you an advantage as to what you can do or not, like being able to get rid of an alcohol card without consequence or being able to turn uh, have access to drugs, for instance. It doesn't really thematically have the depth of all the Lovecraftian games that I have enjoyed very, very much. So that was a real shame. The, the, story, card, the story deck also has another problem. Although you have five chapters, but the cards for each chapter are not defined. So you have your story deck. Say that you get chapter two. Oh no, sorry, no, get back. Uh, you have to be sifting through them until you find the, card, the correct card and then reshuffle. Sift until you find the correct card and then reshuffle. I didn't like that either. It takes an awful lot of time. It just, I get why it happens. Okay, I truly get it. And it's because these cards can be used for any chapter. So that way you get a little bit more variance. It would be much easier to organize the cards in a different way to actually not have to be sifting through all the time. Feels not particularly satisfying. <laughs> Now, Sanity. I want to talk about this a little bit more in depth because I really liked it. Let me get the cards out and let me show you this. This is a Sanity card. And what's going to happen is that you're going to be getting Sanity cards. As you can see here, they have different numbers. One, two, three, six, and up to seven. You will be getting the cards randomly, as in the first one on top of the board or the deck and they are going to get some effects not all of them have effects some of them have no effects whatsoever but some do so the things that you're going to be accumulating cards say that you get I don't know where is this what this means is when you get one card, say that you get number three, and you have already three cards, these are going to trigger all at the same time. So if I were to get now a number four, because I already have six cards, all of them would trigger at the same time. That could have devastating effects on the characters. And that I found fantastic. However, with the alcohol cards, what you can do is that you put it on top. Next round, you turn it around. The following round, you do it again. The next round, you do it again. And the following round, it disappears because you can only be drunk for so long. And then you get your drugs. The problem with the drugs, you can use them, is that they can be very very detrimental for you this is one thing about the game that i did like and is that it doesn't glamorize in any way neither the use of alcohol or the use of drugs as a means to stabilize your mental health it really doesn't work like that it may do it for a little while but after that it could be devastating this i loved truly truly loved and I can see myself adapting this, not just for board games, but for role-playing games as well. This is fantastic. Love it. And this is what makes the game truly special. As it stands, Within Walls is not a great game. It's just a hidden roles game that tries to make do with some story that doesn't really gel well enough with the rest of the game. We didn't find the theme important enough. You're just trying to overcome some challenges. This made it important and interesting because it's not just paranoia about what the other players may be uh, or whether them playing some cards or other cards 
means that they are hindering you or not. This is also for yourself. You can risk accumulating cards because you may have a number seven, for instance, but you only have number one and two, so you still need another four cards to, for this to trigger the whole thing. But if it does, and you don't know when it will, because other players can play cards that will say, give every other player an insanity card. You don't know what the second card is going to be. That can be very tough. So this is interesting. The game, it feels like it needs an expansion to really iron out the rules. The rule book is just hard as heck. Seriously, very, very hard to understand. Desperately needs an instructional designer to redesign the whole thing uh, and, and an editor to really tighten the language because it was so difficult to understand. So it, was a, it wasn't a satisfying experience to play the game because we were left, this should be so good. This has all the ingredients to be so good but it just doesn't gel together well enough. It needs a little bit more TLC, a bit more beta testing, beta playing and tightening up the rules. Once that's done, this could be amazing with better connection between the story and the professions and the characters, a bit more immersive. This could be unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable as it stands. As far as I'm concerned, it's about a six, and as it is a six because of this mental health, this sanity mechanic, this absolutely love it. Everything else, it needs an awful lot of work, unfortunately. I know that there are some people in the BGG who love this game. I've seen some harsh comments on the game also, which I don't entirely agree with. But this needs TLC, and you have something amazing in your hands. If you've already played this game, I would love to hear what you have to say. Um, leave me your comments down there and hopefully the expansion that should be out very soon will get it sorted because this is obviously a labor of love that deserves to be absolutely fantastic.